In this video, you'll witness a remote Thai village cook an entire pig using generations old techniques you've never seen before. These are the Karen people, a hill tribe residing in northern Thailand. Their quickly fading way of life is marked by picturesque villages, stilted houses, and unique regional food. Food different from any you'll find in the rest of Thailand. Have you ever had a bad guy break into your house? I think you could throw this like a ninja star. It's very hard. How do you eat this? What does he see that I don't see? Today, I want to see if I can survive the life. Ew, dude. What the? And the diet of the carrot. Can I tell you something? Sometimes I hate my job. And it all starts here with breakfast. This is the house of Puntip and her mother, Paka, settled in these mountainous highlands 60 miles north of Chiang Mai city. They reside in one of many remote Karen villages. Let me get in my interview position. Well, good morning. Good morning. This is quite the spread we have here. Is this like something you would usually eat for breakfast? Yes. What is this? The rice cake. Does that mean with sticky rice or just normal rice? Sticky rice. Hmm. Beautiful texture. It's really smoky. Yeah, after we smash it, we roast it. It tastes like if Texans cooked rice. It has all that brisket essence, but in a little rice cake. Do you ever put this on there? What's in here? Roasted garlic, tomato, chili, salt, a lot of the herb. Mmm, delicious. That sauce, it is so spicy. You don't need a coffee or espresso out here. You take a hit of that spice, you're good for the day. What am I looking at here? This one, the frogs. The frog, you know what? I thought they would be softer <laughs> than that. These mummified frogs don't require thousands of years to take on this look. Whole frogs, large and small, are smoked over the kitchen's fireplace for a few days until they dry out completely. Before eating, toss them over hot coals and enjoy. It's like a frog jerky. Now, would you eat the bones too? Yes, you did with the chili first. So that's the flavor. It ain't that soft. You could break that with your teeth? I try. You try. <laughs> <laughs> Some parts of bone I can get through, and the meat just tastes like old school jerky. It's just been dried over the fire for a long time. This is a brilliant breakfast. I love it, especially the pounded rice, especially the sauce over here. Born and raised here, Pontiff grew up to become a tour guide. These days, she shares her culture with travelers who make the long journey to this corner of the globe. The whole community here belongs to the Karen people. We call ourselves Bagayong. It means life easy, live easy. In the USA, Karen means something different. This is Karen, and this, and also this. They belong to sub-tribes with distinct customs and languages that make up the Karen tribe as a whole. Today, more than one million Karen have settled in the mountainous northern region of Thailand, enriching the country with their culture and cuisine. Today, we're gonna try a black pig. This is probably the biggest pig I've ever seen yet cooked. Hardy docile and plentiful, marked with black fur, a long snout, and short bodies. This breed of pig is native to Thailand, and most households here have a few. These little piggies will not be going to market. How is that different from a normal pig? Today, 165 pounds of meat will be roasted for a village feast. The meat is yummy. It's small, sweet, and oil. The food we're going to be eating today, is that Bagoyo food or is that Thai food? It's a Bagoyo food. Neighbors are pitching in. Some are grinding spices. Some are preparing the grilling pig. The men prepare the pig. Save its blood, remove its organs, and begin the skewering process. That is, skewering the animal whole. Meanwhile, the ladies begin collecting wood and bamboo to build a fire. What we're about to see is a roasting style I've never seen before. They built the initial structure here. They have a fire beneath. I think eventually the pig is gonna sit on here like some kind of a table. Maybe the closest thing I've seen to this is what we did in Cuba, where they put it on like a big wire mesh and then let it swing. This looks like a medieval torture device. I love it. That's why it's called hamon. But this is still pretty different than that. Usually if you're gonna roast a pig, it needs to be kind of small. So how are they gonna cook such a huge 150 pound pig? I'm about to find out. They cinch the hairy beast, then scrape its skin clean. The pig is split from nose to tail so it can spread out flat. 
Wow, the giant wooden lattice is made by spearing sticks through the meat, securing it in various directions, ensuring it stays in place. With the structure in place, they pivot their focus to marination. Mashed coriander, garlic paste, sugar, turmeric paste, and soy sauce. These potent flavors hit the pig's insides. So right now we're rubbing in the seasonings. It's dyed the whole pig kind of yellow. There's this huge lattice structure here. Is this gonna be strong enough to hold the pig? Yes. <laughs> Have you seen a pig this big be roasted Bigger. before? Bigger than before. Bigger? Yeah. That is wild. What is the next step? We have to carry and then go to the fire. Simple, but not easy. The wood structure was built on the spot, but it could cave in under the weight of this animal just as quickly. Ah, see, I never had a doubt. Now they continue flavoring the pig's outside. What is the reason for laying the pig out flat rather than doing a typical rotisserie? This one is cooked faster. Maybe take about like four or five hours. Two sides of the pit are blocked by corrugated steel sheets to stop the wind and concentrate the heat. Some of the most enjoyable moments of eating any roasted pig is that skin. What's the skin going to be like? I think crispy because they put the turmeric soy sauce. Is there a certain body part that stands out to you that you really like? Tongue. Is the tongue in there? Oh uh, no, they cut up. Did the pig curse them before it died? <laughs> There is a lot to do before we actually start eating it. In fact, I think it might be in need of a little bit of a flip. There's a lot of talk right now about how to rotate the pig. I'm not sure if there's an official procedure. This is not easy to flip. I mean, do you flip side to side, front to back? Oh, that's heavy. I hope it doesn't snap. So they drag it all the way to one side and then they're just gonna, boom, flip it over to this side. Oh God, here we go. They're doing the turn, the wood's about to give out. On your back oh my gosh. They have gently laid it down. Here right. All right, so look, easy peasy. Every 10, 20 minutes, just do that. I mean, that, just like flipping a pancake. No big deal at all. Mm. Oh, look at that. You can see the meat with all the spices. I mean, over the next few hours, this is gonna transform and change colors a lot in the meantime. We gotta reinforce this structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get her on your back the pig is roasting, but we're not just gonna stand around like a bunch of bums. This is my man Khaled. How you doing? He doesn't speak English. But we speak the language of animal hunting. Today, we're gonna go out into the jungle or maybe very nearby the village. We're gonna find some creatures. Now it's not a tiger, it's not a boa constrictor, it's worse. It's a cricket a multitude of crickets. Let me tell you, we are armed to the teeth. Check this out. Does that look like a butter knife to you? No. And then we got a couple of hoes. Couple of bros, couple of hoes. Let's go find some crickets. <clears throat> Let's go. He said this way, I'm assuming. The night chirper, the long leaper, the cricket. They can be found in trees, in grasslands, and down here. What? Right here already? Did he bury these crickets last night? Is that how we found them so quick? Oh, I do see some holes in here, but it's all filled in. How many crickets could be in there? Is it like a nest, like ants? Is it a single cricket? So he takes a little twig, he digs into the hole, nothing. All right, here's how you know this is real. It's boring, nothing's happened yet. These crickets are subterranean, digging burrows into the earth. Oh, is that one? Once you see one up close, oh. you soon realize this is no ordinary cricket. Ew, dude, what the? Take a look at that. We got a cricket, ladies and gentlemen. That is a pretty meaty, big cricket, but they get a lot bigger than this, too. These bulky bugs are known as big brown crickets. Crickets are typically dodging predators like birds, but out here, they need to watch out for this guy. Oh, come take a look at this. I figured out what he's looking for. Right here, there's a little recess in the dirt about the size of a quarter, maybe a nickel. When he sees that, he knows that's probably a place for these big crickets burrowed into. Then he digs down until he finds it. Please, my man, take it away. Hmm. Oh, I think this might be a little bit more of an art than a science. Oh yes, it's jumping out. Oh, it's too late for you, bud. This one is big. Look at that booty. Big legs, quads, juicy hips. It's like the Shakira of crickets. That's a compliment, by the way. Oh yeah, buddy. Oh, this one's freaking huge. They don't bite, right? Oh! <coughs> Sorry. It's got claws. This guy is 
good. When he hunts them, I was hoping maybe he would find a whole nest of them, but no, it's one at a time. This job is so laborious, it's like five minutes per cricket. I know a lot of you just eat crickets like it's no big deal. It's a big deal, right? Mm. To prepare, they clean and remove their wings and guts one by one. Then they're deep fried in hot oil. Add fried kaffir lime leaves, a little bit of salt, and this plate of pests isn't looking too bad. Unfortunately, this other local snack is looking quite bad. This fuzzy, ground-dwelling tarantula is eaten in Karen villages. No seasoning, no anything. Toss it on the fire for 20 minutes and do your best to enjoy. This is what I'm always curious about. Whenever I go to the countryside, it seems people like everything, no matter how strange it might seem to me. But I feel like in the USA, every kid everywhere has some food they hate. So when you grew up, what food did you hate? I don't like snake because our cultures, they eat snake. And you liked both of these items. I like this one better, this one. Maybe we should work our way up to that. These are stunning. Ooh, there's a big fat one here. And then there's the lime leaf. Do we eat that too? Yes. Mmm, that is so delicious. It is aromatic, you taste it in your nose. It's like an explosion of flavor in your mouth. And it reminds me of Fruity Pebbles. Have you ever had Fruity Pebbles? It's like small rocks, but it tastes like fruit. Small rocks? No, that's not a good comparison. Let's try the cricket too. The cricket is oily, it's almost buttery and nutty. But when you mix it up with these leaves, this is like some five-star restaurant quality stuff here. I like it. Out of 10, how many? Nine. What about this one? That's one. Now I heard there's a legend, I don't know if it's true, that it's bad luck to eat half of one. Yeah, because if you eat separate, you might be separate with your mom and your wife. I think this is a trick to make children eat the whole thing. <sighs> Can I tell you something? Sometimes I hate my job. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna break the butt off. Oh, I don't even wanna look in there. I'll put that down for now. Or do I have to hold it? Okay, I cannot split it up or else my parents will get divorced again. My parents are already divorced. <laughs> Okay. Let's try it out. Really love that you don't try to dress up the natural flavors. Just let it speak for itself, you know? A little bit strong smell, right? It's so hairy. My God, it takes a long time to chew. You're done? Oh, you're still doing? All done. <laughs> wow. That's only half of it. It tastes like charcoal. It's a little burny. And the exoskeleton, it's wild. This here is the butt. It looks like a grape covered in black velvet. That is where the webbing comes out. And honestly, I didn't realize it had little anus arms. Oh, okay. These are little butthole arms. Yeah, because I don't have... Oh, maybe they broke off. Oh. Mine is so huge, it's butthole arms have biceps. <laughs> out of 10, crickets were a nine. What's this? I would say that's pretty generous. My gosh, the webbing, the butt material is soft, it's livery, sticky. I'm sorry. Oh, oh I don't want to cheat. Oh, I'm in my own personal hell. You can clean our mouth there. Clean your mouth with a cricket. <laughs> <laughs> that was insane. Very nice though. When you grew up here, how much of your diet came from the farm? About like 70% is from our farm. And so that's rice, that's vegetables and meat, maybe chicken, pork and bugs. Yeah. How often did your family go to the store for food? About like one a week. And that would be like sugar, salt, oil, stuff like that. Uh -huh. The houses you live in, they're very fascinating, very traditional, beautiful, made with solid wood. They're all stilted houses. There's a whole level underneath the house. Do people hang out in the house or under the house more often? under the house like this. Like this guy? Uh -huh. Three hours later and the pig is nearly finished. Developing a gorgeous dark brown hue as its skin becomes crispified in caramelized seasoning. The alluring aroma invites more and more curious folks to gather. After a couple more flips, it'll finally be ready. But in the meantime, side dishes are also being whipped up like these, grilled intestines. After a good cleaning, the big and small intestines are mixed with turmeric and garlic then put over the grill. So right here, I have the intestine. It's looking somewhat crispy, somewhat stretchy and chewy. Let's try it out. That's delicious, super chewy. Some parts have kind of dried out and have almost like a little intestinal bark on there. That's magical, not gamey at all. It just tastes like some other fatty cut of meat.
Like most places in the countryside, especially in Southeast Asia, they are using every part of the animal here. The whole pig is right there, but then all the organs get used too. This is the tongue. Earlier, she said her favorite cut is the tongue. So that's cooking too. The heart, the liver, the lungs, all that is gonna be put together in a beautiful dish. We're gonna be trying that soon. And hey, maybe I'll get to try some of uh, PT's tongue here, huh? Let's find out. Next, pig organ soup. The liver, the lungs, and the heart are sautéed with a mixture of garlic, shallots, turmeric, chilies, and fermented pepper paste. Add in water, the root herb, and pig's blood. When the soup thickens up, flavor it with kaffir, lemongrass, spring onions, cilantro, coriander, and a seasoning powder. Everyone lends a hand, and the moment we've been waiting for draws near. Our dinner table, in the form of banana leaves, is laid down. Some dish out the food, and some call out for their friends and family to join. But there's still one missing piece. It's like five to six hours at this point. Some parts of this are super thick, like eight inches maybe. Do you think it's cooked all the way through? We can eat now. The skin and the leg is already cooked, but... What do we do about those raw parts? After we move and then we cut some part that raw, we have to put back. That makes sense. I think if we waited for everything to be cooked, the outside might turn black. Oh, I can hear the skin is super crispy and crunchy. I can hear the knife just scraping against it. And then underneath, very juicy white meat. Let's try it out. Oh, that is crunchy. Sticky, satisfying, greasy. I mean, all I've got really is skin right now, but wow, that's really good. Right underneath that, it's kind of gummy. It reminds me of eating Korean pig skin when it's put on a flat top and just grilled for 10 or 20 minutes. Oh, it's so juicy. What a treat. Here you can see the soft meat, there's fat. Oh, that's delicious. So soft, just completely, utterly juicy. Is that cooked all the way? <laughs> this is insane. It just tastes like it absorbed the essence of a whole nother pig. It's two pigs in one. That's so good. It's very yummy. You have a load of jealous people right behind you. We can't do this much longer. There we go. The meal is underway. I can't believe that nobody's just digging into this immediately. There is the intestinal soup over here. They're a huge hit. And then we all have this inside here, a little carbohydrate gift from God, sticky rice. Oh, the cutting has begun. She just ripped off some skin and underneath, woof, look at this. A little bit of protein and just literal inches of fat. That is wild. Do you ever just eat that? Yes. Oh, do you dip it? Fantastic. I've got some chili sauce right here. Here we go. Oh, that is like chili oil times a thousand. The sauce is almost a little bit bitter, super spicy, super hot. The fat is very rich. You gotta mix it with some rice here and there. Balance. Now, I know you said you like the tongue. Oh, there's little pieces. Everybody got into the tongue right away. You gotta be quick here. What do you like about the tongue? It's a little bit gummy. Mmm, mm mm-hmm. That's awesome. And I can see why that's valuable, because there's just a little bit of it. Soon we're gonna get into this meat. I've got some soup here. It looks incredible. Mm. The liver is kind of hard. The lungs are kind of jiggly. I don't like it. The lung? Yeah, it's too soft. Oh yeah, that's lungs. Like and you that? know right away, because it's spongy. And you chew it, and you chew it, and nothing happens. But I like it, because it soaks up all that broth. It's so fragrant, and there's so many powerful flavors. The lemongrass, the golongol. Oh my gosh, you taste it from the top of your forehead to the bottom of your belly. There's a reason a lot of people don't like to roast a really big pig, and that is because as they get bigger, they don't keep having a lot of muscle, they start packing on the fat. So right now, they're peeling away all that fat to get to any pork underneath. This is essentially the pork loin from the back. What would you do? This piece is so big. Do I just bite off it? Mm -hmm. Oh. That's the way I do it. Now, it could easily be too heavy, and obviously these inner pieces don't have any seasoning on them, and so you have to add the sauce that they have right here. Mm. Somehow it cuts through all that rich fattiness, and it's just this refreshing, super spicy, chili oil type flavor. Oh, ribs. Take a look at this, pork ribs. Mm-hmm. These are some crispy ribs, my friend. Almost like jerky on the other side, because it has roasted so long and so close to the fire. PT. You grew up in this village. Eventually you went to school, you got a job, and you moved out of the village. Now you live in the city. Yes. 
About what percentage of people who grow up here actually stay here? I think just like 10 percent they will stay in the village. And what are the others doing? The other 90 percent? Just an hour from here, Chiang Mai, northern Thailand's largest city, expands with populations of young adults looking to escape the villages where they grew up. They leave the picturesque, peaceful countryside in search of the unknown, looking for education, jobs, options that simply can't be found within these hills. Most of them, if they graduated, they will work at the city and send some money back to their hometown. Do you think this tradition of the Karen people, the way people live out here in the country, is this gonna go away soon? I mean, if everybody is just moving to the city, then there's no one left to preserve what's here. I'm not so sure, like 10 or 20 years, my village, they will stay here. But for the new generation, I think they will not you know, come back and stay here. May not be long. These are stunning. Until the traditions we observe today That's magical. are nothing more than a memory. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. Look at that booty. Big legs. It's the. Wait, was that chicken? Oh baby, when you dance like that, sun, sun, sun. who's that Latin chick? Kai, why did we do this here? Let's keep going. Ah! That one peed on me, or I squeezed it to death. I don't know. Bloopers. Do you ever put that on here? No. Did I just create a new cuisine? This is my new series where I go to local tribes and tell them they're doing it wrong. Can we flip it now? Yes. Where is my... Flipping people! <laughs> Flip squad! <laughs> this is like some five... Oh no! I should have gotten a bigger table, I'm sorry. This is the alpha of all crickets, but... Sorry, buddy. I'm the alpha today. My parents are already divorced. <laughs> They'll get remarried. <laughs> and split up again? It'll be heartbreaking. I won't be able to take it a second time. <laughs> Guys, that is it for this video. I want to know, of all the foods I ate today, which one would you most want to try and which one would you never try in your life? Let me know in the comments down below. That is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.